everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. If you're planning to travel in the near future, don't forget the travelers the world over have found Horlicks indispensable on their journeys. For 50 years, they have carried Horlicks into every corner of the globe on every kind of transportation. The reason? In both powder and tablet form, Horlicks is a fine concentrated food. Convenient to carry, ideal as a palatable nourishment in all cases of travel sickness, air, land, and sea. Horlicks is beneficial where other nourishment fails because of its remarkable digestibility. Often it is the one food that can be kept on the stomach. Horlicks, too, is a fine, refreshing, energy-giving drink for all holiday occasions. It makes a tempting light snack for any time of the day, a lunch or supper that can be prepared in a minute. So travelers all, wherever you're going, near or far, never fail to take along a good supply of Horlicks, the original. You can get it, you know, at any drugstore in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. You know, Abner disappeared Wednesday afternoon and hasn't been seen or heard of since. It is suspected that he might have met with foul play at the hands of Squire Skimp and Snake Hogan, as he was last seen with them, and they had made several threats to recover the $2,000 they paid him for his Jotham Down store. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum over at Dick Huddleston's store, discussing Abner's strange disappearance. Listen. Well, it certainly is thought Elizabeth a lesson, Abner disappearance. She feels that she's responsible for the whole thing. Oh, I don't think it's no fault of hers. Well, she thinks that Abner just got disgusted over the way she was acting and took the $2,000 and left. The way she was acting? Yeah, she realizes now she kind of lost her head over society. Playing contract bridge and taking singing lessons, not paying any attention to her home. Well, I reckon she did overdo the thing a little. Oh, my, yeah. Got that hard girl who's spending a lot of money foolish for clothes yeah. one thing or another. Well, she says she's quit all that now. She go at the house last night and said she'd let the hired girl go, and her and Pearl was going to the field right early this morning, chop cotton. Well, I do know. Uh, she wanted to put a notice in the paper telling Abner to come on home that she'd given up the society. Yeah, well, I expect a lot of women get their men back if they put a notice in the paper like that. <laughs> she thinks Abner separated her, huh? Yeah, that's the way she talked last night. Blames herself. Says she had no business going in for society when Abner was so strong against it that way. Well, he was saying just the other day, though, that he was going in for society now since he sold his store. You know, told me and you that he was going to get him a book on society and study up on it right good and set a pace around here that'd be hard for the rest of us to follow. Yeah, he said that all right. But there's bound to be some reason for him being gone. Yeah, it ain't like him just to leave without telling nobody where he's going. And I still believe that Squire Skimp and Snake Hogan knows a lot more that they haven't told. Well, I don't know. They stuck to that same story all the way through. Claim Abner jumped out of the car and run off through the woods there. That's where I believe he's at, right there. Lost over there in them mountains. Oh, I don't think Abner'd get lost. Well, as he knows those mountains around here, why, well, he's hunted squirrel over every foot of the ground. Yeah, but it was mighty nigh dark when he jumped out of the car, though. He might have run off a bluff somewhere, or run his head right into a tree and hurt himself. Well, that isn't very likely, though, Lon. I'll bet you that Snake Hogan and the squire could find him in an hour's time. We had some way to make him do it. Well, the sheriff cross-examined him, and he says he don't think they know a thing about it. Yeah, I know he said that. I have many confidence in that sheriff, either. I told him I want him to investigate this silver mining stock the squire's been selling around here, and he went over there to talk to Squire about it, and before he got away, why, Squire sold him two shares of stock in the company. Three shares? I signed the stock certificate to myself. $150 for it. Uh, fun too, good. <laughs> that Squire's a smooth talker, I'll say that for him. Well, when Squire showed him that telegram, he got the issue. Uh, the sheriff was just begging him to let him have some of the stock. What telegram is that? And you heard about that? No, I reckon not. My squire was showing it around to everybody in town. He got a wire from a big millionaire mine operator out there in Arizona. He said he was driving through to see him, wants to buy the mine. Well, I'll declare I hadn't heard that. When's he coming? Why, he's looking for him today, I think. And he wants to buy the mine, huh? Yeah, he said he had the cash money to pay for it with. Well. See, he lives out in there. He's been down in the mine and all the silver he sells. You know he wouldn't want to be buying it unless it was an awful good thing. No. Well, I hope he does buy it. Maybe you fellas have bought stock in it. It'll make something out there after all out of it, Lon. Oh, it's looking better now than it ever did. 
tell you the truth, I don't know where we ought to sell it or not. Why, sure I'd sell it. It just looks to me like if it's good enough that he won't abide, why, we could make more if we just kept it and run it ourselves. You know he aims to make a profit on the deal. Yeah, but now if he's already in the mining business, like Squire said, why, well, he's probably got all the mining machinery and equipment that he'll need to mine it with, and he could make uh, money out of it where somebody else couldn't. Well, mm-hmm. sir, if he makes anything like a reasonable offer, why, well, I'd sure take him up on it. Well, Squire says he's going to call a meeting of the stockholders when Mr. Worthington gets here and let him make his proposition, and then they can all decide on it. Mr. Worthington? Yeah, that's the millionaire's name that's coming. Oh. Well, I haven't had a bit of faith in this proposition up till now, huh? but maybe I was wrong. I hope so. And you, you're going to have your regrets when this thing is all over for not getting in on it. Here, the rest of us will be millionaires, you might say, spend our winters in Florida and California and you still be down here running this store for a little. Yeah, maybe so. Better change your mind and buy a couple of shares anyway, Dick. Get that stock for too late. No, no, I passed it up this far, Lom. I guess I'll just stay out of it. Probably making a mistake, but I've made lots of them before, I guess. <laughs> Why, you could take $100 worth of stock and make you a dependence for the rest well, of Well, there's grand there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, sir, I have to laugh every time I look at Grandpap in that sport outfit. <laughs> yeah. If he's not a sight. <laughs> well, come in, Grandpap. Well, howdy, man, howdy. Sort of hot today, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Awful warm today. Grandpap, you're going to have to get yourself a barrel, Summers, and stay in it while you get them slacks on. <laughs> Knees and them pants look like you're fixing to jump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Charity said this morning I ought to take them off and let her iron them. Uh... Have you got any word from Abner yet? Uh, no, we haven't heard a thing, Grandpap, not a thing. Well, sir, I'm just worried to death about it. Yeah, me too. Uh, Charity was a saying, though, that she heard yesterday at the bridge club that uh, it's being whispered around town that uh, Abner just pulled out and left his woman. Yeah, I heard some talk about that, too. Well, that's what Elizabeth thinks, you know, too. Well, I ain't no hand to gossip, but I know they weren't getting along any too well at the last. He's having trouble over Elizabeth being in society, I think. Yeah, Abner wouldn't do nothing. He wouldn't take bridge lessons and quit his voice lessons, you know, after starting. Awful backwards, he's there for a while. But after he sold his store, he said he aimed to make up for lost time. Said he's going to show us all how society ought to be did. Uh-huh. He might have been just saying that, too, to throw us off in the track, knowing all the time he's going to skip out. Well, I can't hardly believe that Abner do that, though, Grandpap. I'm just afraid that it's something more serious than that. That's what's worrying me. Yeah, Dick here thinks Squire Skimp and Snake Hogan knows where he's at. Well, they were the last ones that he was seen with, Lum. And you know yourself that they forced him in that car down here Wednesday afternoon and drove off with him. We haven't seen him since. Yeah, they done that all. Why, sure they did. Yeah, I heard about that. Well, they claim, though, that he left them after they got down the road a piece there. See, Squire was driving the car, and Snake was holding Abner in the back seat there. And when he stopped, why, some way or other, Abner jerked loose and jumped out and tore out through the woods, heading for the mountains. There's where I think he's at. Well, I just wish there was something we could do about it. I just hate to sit here and not turn a hand to try to locate him, but I just don't know what we could do for him. No, no, it's a problem. Yeah. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack so many places he could be. Oh, yeah. Might have went to visit some of his relations. Well, oh, it looks like he left some word, though, if he's going of his own car that way. That's what got me stung. Yeah. The uh, sheriff said that he'd put his deputies to work on the case and that he'd call us the minute that he hears anything. You ain't hear nothing from him, huh? No, I haven't heard a word yet. Yeah, I bet old Abner wish he had to put that $2,000 in that silver mine when he hears about this fellow that's coming all the way from Arizona to try to buy it. Yeah, Lama was just telling me about that a while ago. Yeah, and Squire begging him to buy stock with it, too. <laughs> Granny, if he had invested that money in that mine, it'd take four men to boy to count the money he'd have made. I sure. Squire says I'm going to be rich just off of that $200 I put in it. Wait a minute. What's that driving up out there in front? For the land sake. Look at that automobile. Man, that's a pretty thing. The biggest than I ever seen. Say, that must be that fellow that Squire's expecting, you know, at Mr. Worthington. Yeah, yeah, that's about who it is. Yeah, you can tell he's a millionaire. Look at that fancy suit he's wearing. Oh, well, that's a chauffeur, Lum, you're looking at. (laughs) That's a what? Chauffeur. Drive a car for him. Looks like a policeman with that cap on that way. (laughs) Man, that's a fine-looking automobile. I bet he's looking for Squire. He'll more likely come in here and ask where Squire lives. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Come on, let's go out and get acquainted with him. 
See, I'm the president of the company. i got to be nice. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. Somebody sitting in the back seat there, I think, smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Yeah, hey, look at that cigarette holder, won't you? <laughs> Bet that thing's two foot long. Well, uh, wait a minute, he's getting out there. Yeah, dang Look at them clothes. Mm. Look at them checks on that coat. <laughs> now, there's a fella that's dressed up. <laughs> Makes our sport clothes look like everyday clothes, Granddad. <laughs> Mm, Bonnie can tell by looking at that man, he's a way up yonder in society. Uh, Jack, I'd nearly bet money that I've seen that fella before something. He does look familiar. He sure does. Wait a minute, listen. Yeah, he's saying something to that fella that's driving the car for him. Uh, just take my bag door to the house, Adolph, and tell my woman to have dinner ready at 7 o'clock. And you can come back for me in about 15 or 20 minutes. Well, I'll be bad for It's Abner. Well, howdy, boys, howdy. <laughs> what was it Abner said about society? He was going to set a pace in Pine Ridge that would be hard to follow. Well, he seems to be getting off to a big start. <laughs> and now, we'd like to extend our congratulations and good wishes for the future to Mrs. E. Wilson of Patterson, New Jersey. She writes as follows to tell of her complete recovery from a very serious illness. I enjoy your program very much. And when I hear Horlicks mentioned, I always smile because it did such wonders for me after a recent illness. I just dreaded to see any kind of nourishment. I told my family that I was going to try your product, Horlicks. Then I tried Horlicks, and for the next year, I lived on nothing else. So it's no wonder that I smile when I hear you mention it over the radio, knowing the wonderful good it did me. I'd like to add that I never grew tired of Horlicks. I still love it and never refuse a glass of it. I hope that many of your listeners will help bring themselves to good health by using Horlicks. Well, thank you, Mrs. Wilson. We're certainly glad that you found Horlicks as beneficial as it has always been considered for building sick persons back to health. Any of our listeners wishing to get Horlicks can buy it at their favorite drugstore. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until Monday at the same time.